Nomad Church. Gear up. Thou shalt judge. And don't give me that only God can judge me crap either. Sit tight and pay attention. Exposing a fellow believer is our task. We could see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 12, and that reads, It isn't my responsibility to judge outsiders, but it is certainly your responsibility to judge those inside the church who are sinning. In other words, folks, if you're a believer in Christ, we're supposed to let you know when you're sinning. Exposing a fellow believer is our task. Jesus didn't tell sinners to go to church. He told his church to go to sinners. Go out to the highways and country roads, all all the verses that we use. Because people think they're too good. Jesus hung around murderers, thieves, back then tax collectors who were considered, you know, bad people. He even hung around the one that turned on him. So exposing sin is what we need to do. So Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11 through 12 reads, Take no part in the worthless pleasures of evil and darkness, but instead rebuke and expose them. It would be shameful even to mention here those pleasures of darkness that the ungodly do. There's Jesus telling you right there, expose sin for what it is. You know, There's the argument of a gay Christian. Some say it's an anomaly. There is no such thing. That's not my opinion. I don't put my opinions into these podcasts. I put God's word into these podcasts. So you can't say, oh, he said this. Everyone looks at homophobia. Phobia means fear. There is no fear when you're in Christ. So I don't know where they got that term from. Don't fear anything. Have no fear. The Bible says 365 times, but when did this perverted nation get a foothold and whose fault is it? I would blame that on the church. The church turned a blind eye, but we're going to get into that in a minute. Now, just because something is legal doesn't mean it's right. According to God, gay marriage, abortion and California's pedo law, for example, None of that's right, according to God's word. None of it. But we have to learn to stand on God's word and not be scared to preach it. When did that happen? Because, folks, we see things of this world and know immediately if they're abnormal. But nobody's saying anything. That's exactly why it's getting worse. I said before, I'm a sports fan. I can't even watch it with these, you know, athletes getting COVID and they have no symptoms and they're out for two weeks. The cardboard cutouts in the stands for the fans, you know, that's all building up to a mandatory vaccine. You could see that coming a mile away. You know, I pay for a service where we don't get that many commercials during the game. So I think there was four commercials during one half. That's minimal. Three out of the four commercials had either a homosexual couple kissing or a drag queen reading to kids or, you know, some transgender thing with bathroom. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. That is abnormal, according to God's word, but nobody's speaking out about it. Why is that? Because they're scared of being labeled a homophobe or offensive. Who cares? Now, imagine a dad that's sitting with his young child watching a game. Dad gets up, goes to the bathroom. Kid's sitting down eating a hot dog or, you know, popcorn watching TV and sees these commercials while dad's gone. He's not going to get any guidance. He just sees a man dressed like a woman and two men kissing. Folks, I don't care who you are. I don't care what state you're in. That is abnormal in the eyes of God. Matter of fact, God's word says it's an abomination. But you see, folks, silence is consent. Being complacent in friends of this world is hostile towards God. You think I'm joking? 
Look at James chapter 4, verse 4. It says, You adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. I don't want God as an enemy. I want nothing to do with this world if it's going to make me an enemy of God. No way. We have to really get real here, folks. You need to pick a side. We're going to get into more after we take this quick break. You know, most atheists don't want to believe in God because they think it's a way to release their accountability for sin. Let's look at Psalm chapter 53, verse 1, and that reads, Only a fool would say to himself, There is no God. And why does he say it? Because of his wicked heart, his dark and evil deeds, his life is corroded with sin. Right there. Someone that says they don't believe in God, man, they got a life full of sin. And, oh, but only God can judge me. Hmm. Not believing in God is a sin. And that's a sin not even Satan committed. He knew God. He believes in God. He has to go to God for permission. So isn't that crazy? But you got fools running around here on earth talking about they don't believe in God. Civil Liberties Union sues if you put up a nativity scene at a courthouse or a public building. This is getting ridiculous. But you know, calling out sin in other believers can save them. That's in James chapter 5 verse 20 and it reads, That person who brings him back to God will have saved a wandering soul from death, bringing about the forgiveness of his many sins. So folks, you have people that, you know, are, are lost. And I'm going to say this right now. If I'm doing something wrong that would prevent me from entering God's kingdom, I would absolutely want somebody to point it out to me so I can repent and get back on the right track with God. Okay, we need to hold each other accountable. Because think about this. Every time God intervenes in a lawless society, how does it end for the unsaved people? Sodom and Gomorrah, Noah, time and time again throughout the Bible, societies have burned up and fallen and flooded and you know, all kinds of things. But of course, once again, you can hear the argument of only God can judge me. Well, why in the heck do you want to be judged? Wouldn't you rather repent and get saved instead? But again, people are so scared of being offensive. Well, I'm not politically correct, folks. I'd rather offend you and help you get to heaven rather than appease you knowing you'll go to hell. So take it for what it is. I see all these pastors scared to say anything and you know, I have calls with pastors and they're, well, I can't say that because then the congregation and the board of directors, you want to know what my answer is? I can't be bullied into submission as some lame commercial so-called Christian pastors. I am very close minded and nobody or nothing can change that. And you know what usually happens when I say this? Oh, well, I got to let you go. And that's the end of the call. Nobody wants to stand up against the world because they hope God forgives them. But what's the old saying? Hope in one hand, crap in the other. See which one fills up first. You better start following God's laws and stop playing around with the world. Because I just read it to you a little while ago. Being friends with the world and being complacent makes you an enemy of God. Now, again, Jesus didn't tell sinners to go to church. He told his church to go to sinners. But we have to do so in an authentic manner, not bend and, you know, conform to the world. We're supposed to go tell sinners what sin is so they can come get cleaned up. Bottom line. You know, I look at a lot of these commercial pastors as agent provocateurs and they've created mind puppets. People do exactly what they are told, but keep paying that money because these pastors tell them, you can do whatever you want, friends, and God will still forgive you. But don't forget to pay your money. They'll tell you whatever you want to hear as long as you pay that money. But I'm here to tell you the truth. 
Sin is this, that, and the other, and that could lead you to hell. So stop it. There's no other way around it. A lot of people talk about they pray and they ask for help, and but they keep going back to the drug or the married woman that they're sleeping with on the side or the infidelity and the cheating they're doing with their spouse. And how come they can't stop? You want the answer? Here it is. God won't remove your demons until you stop entertaining them. Okay. When you stop calling on them demons, then God will intervene. But you keep playing that, you know, lukewarm position. Scripture says be hot or cold before God or against them, because if you lukewarm, he's going to vomit you out of his mouth. Don't play with that. So I ask you right now, folks, how many of you listening need to repent for some things before it's too late? Is it time for you to be set free from a life of sin? Because some people may know of your sin, but some may not because you're deep in the closet or, you know, you're doing it online and you think nobody's watching. Anything you do online can be seen. More than that, God is watching. So if you need to get cleaned up for some sins you're carrying around for a lifestyle you know you shouldn't be living and you want to get cleaned up, it can happen immediately. Stay tuned. I'm going to lead you in a prayer of salvation. And if you want to know more about the ministry, visit our website, www.nomadchurch.tv. We love you, everybody, and Godspeed. Repeat after me. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart and forgive me for all my sins. Cleanse me with your precious blood and write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and lead me on the road to salvation. I pray this prayer in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.